The Geminid meteor shower happens every December, and it's one of the most reliable and impressive meteor showers of the entire year, often producing well over 100 meteors per hour to spot, meaning you are not going to want to miss this one. Let's take a look at how to spot these meteors, where to look, and what actually causes this shower every single year. Every December, the Earth passes through a dense debris stream coming off of a rocky asteroid. This causes the Geminoid meteor shower. The shower actually gets its name from the Gemini constellation, which, from our point of view here on Earth, is where all of the shooting stars appear to come from. Thanks to some Latin grammar, we add an ID onto the end, and Gemini becomes the Geminids. In Latin, the ID means of or belonging to. So this is the meteors belonging to the Gemini constellation. Kind of cute. The peak of the shower tends to fall on the 13th or 14th of December each year. And unlike some more unpredictable showers, the Geminids are usually very dependable. On a typical year, they reach between 100 and 150 meteors per hour. But under perfect dark skies late in the night, it's possible to see even more. The meteor activity is also spread over a pretty long window, from about December 4th to 17th, so you can often catch them on the surrounding nights too, just in case it's cloudy or you're busy at the peak. Unlike outburst-driven showers like the Draconids, the Geminids usually don't produce dramatic storms, but they make up for it with sheer consistency, easily making them one of the best and easiest meteor showers to spot in the whole year. I think if you only watch one meteor shower a year, this is one of the best ones to try. As I said, every Geminid meteor looks like it's coming from the Gemini constellation, which luckily for us is much easier to spot than some other constellations that have meteor showers. Once again, looking at you, Draco. This is thanks to the two bright twin stars, Castor and Pollux. These stars actually give the constellation its name. In Latin, once again, Gemini means twins. Even if we struggle to spot these two bright stars, Gemini sits close to Orion, which is one of the easiest constellations to find in the sky. So even if you're not confident at picking out Gemini itself, you can use Orion as your guide. Orion is brilliant and distinctive, with the famous three stars forming the belt, and that's probably the easiest thing to look for in the sky, and the rest of the constellation has a nice hourglass shape. Once you find Orion, look up and to the left if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, and that will give you Gemini. The Radiant of the Geminids sits near Castor, one of those twin stars, but honestly, looking anywhere in that general area will do you fine. If we're being really honest, as long as it's dark and you have a clear sky above you, just looking up anywhere will let you see some meteors. So don't stress too much about finding the perfect spot in the sky. Just go out, have fun, and look up. The Radiant is the point in the sky where all of the meteors appear to come from. They're not actually coming from that star or constellation, in this case Gemini, it's just a perspective effect. Kind of like when train tracks look like they meet on the horizon. They never actually do that, it just looks like it from our point of view. The higher the Radiant is in the sky, the more meteors you'll see, which is why the Geminids usually look best after midnight, when Gemini sits higher above the horizon. This just means that the higher the constellation gets in the sky, the brighter the meteors are going to look. So the later you can leave it, the better. I like to then lie on the ground on a blanket or in a reclining chair, with the top of my head pointing roughly towards Gemini and Orion. That way, most of the shooting stars will look like they're coming from above and flying outwards across the sky. Another really nice thing here is that Geminid meteors are often colourful too, sometimes yellow, white or even green thanks to the materials that burn up in them as they hit the atmosphere. All that said, if you're in a garden or somewhere with a bright streetlight or something nearby, exactly like I have in my garden, it will still be best to just face away from that light. That's just going to stop your eyes being too sensitive and you won't see the dimmer meteors. Doing this, you should still see plenty of those meteors and avoiding any bright lights is far more important than having the meteors moving in a particular direction overhead. Then you just need to avoid looking at anything too bright for as long as you can, and that does include your phone, to preserve your night vision as you get more sensitive in the dark, and enjoy a steady stream of Geminids flying across the sky. Remember, you'll definitely need to wrap up warm for this December shower. This one can get really cold. Take a warm drink, 
maybe a hot water bottle, and enjoy the show. If it's cloudy, you would need to try again, either later that night or on one of the surrounding nights, and hopefully you can find the clear one. The darker the sky you can find, the better, and you will see more meteors in that case. Again, having said that, a garden will be perfectly fine, even if it's not pitch black. Just get out and look up, and you should see them even without perfect conditions. Let me know down below if you do manage to spot a few of them and enjoy what is widely considered to be the best meteor shower of the year. Despite the fact that it looks like each meteor is coming from the Gemini constellation, the true origin of the meteors has nothing at all to do with that constellation. Actually, the Geminids are not even caused by a comet like many other regular meteor showers, but by a strange rocky asteroid called 3200 Phaethon. This parent body is sometimes called a rock comet, because although it behaves like an asteroid most of the time, it seems to shed dust when it swings extremely close to the sun during its 1.4 year orbit. Phaethon gets incredibly hot, up to around 700 degrees Celsius, and it has an unusual blue color, which is also rare among asteroids. Over thousands of years, its repeated close passes to the sun have created a thick, stable debris stream. Each year, the Earth plows right through this dust, as the little bits of rock hit our atmosphere at around 35 kilometers a second, friction causes them to heat up and burn in bright streaks, giving us what we see as the Geminid meteors. Good luck spotting some of those meteors this year. Do share any luck you have with me in the comments down below, and thanks a lot for watching. I hope you see some excellent showers. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!